All right. Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. Guns are a very divisive topic. Today's video is going to consider the problem of gun violence from an engineer's perspective. The fact that I'm about to talk about guns online feels like I'm about to walk right onto the top of a huge active hornet's nest, but I personally feel this conversation can take place in an intelligent, respectful way. I would love your help distributing this video because just by the very nature of the topic, I've got hundreds of images of guns in this video. It would not surprise me in the least if it was suppressed in the YouTube algorithm because YouTube itself doesn't want gun violence out there. So please consider sharing this video if you like the discussion that we have here in a second. No matter what your position is in the gun debate, whether you love guns or you don't like guns, I'm personally a gun owner, we all agree and and everyone I've spoken to agrees that we want to do something to prevent more gun violence. Two years ago, I started working with a buddy of mine named Chad. We want to make hardware smarter so that it can prevent injuries and fatalities. In a previous video, we showed you our solution to prevent kickback of a circular saw. If we detect kickback using machine learning, then we stop the blade. I hope to update you on that project in the near future, by the way, but today I'm going to tell you about something we were working on in parallel to that project. About a year ago, we decided to try to create a technology, a, a Box, really, that could be plugged into existing security camera systems in order to detect guns where they shouldn't be. We do not think we have the solution for school shootings. We think we have a component that could be rolled in to a much larger strategy. So basically, it's a gun detector. Right. How many months? Um, many of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you can put video into this box and the box tells you if there's not only a gun in the frame, but where in the frame it is. And we'll draw a little box around where the gun is. It'll also associate a confidence level too, right? Right. And so it's a probability of zero to one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so if it's a one, then it knows without a doubt it's a gun. a gun. We have the unit sitting here. We've got the video that's coming from this webcam right here. We've got your phone set up right there, which is about to die, by the way. You need to charge your phone. <laughs> so check this out. We've got some guns right here, okay? These are empty. Just let me show you that, because it's important. So that's empty. Uh, this one's also empty. So we're about to do a demonstration. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show those firearms to the webcam. Now things to keep in mind here is it matters. So when I, when I pull this gun into frame of the webcam, it's out of frame right now. When I pull it into frame, the system should see it, right? Right. So I bring it into frame. It's detected the gun. It texts you the picture of the gun. You can pick up the other gun. That's a, that's a different, it's a different color. Is it tracking it? It got it. It got it. And so it just has to track it. And what does it do? Assign a confidence level? Right. Like what, what happens if you have two guns, right? So it should detect them both. Um, what I was trying to do is only detect guns that somebody's holding. Okay. Because if it's in somebody, it's, if it's in a holster, a police uh -huh. officer's holster, a security guard's holster, and he's not carrying it, there's no chance of it going off. So the interaction of the gun to the hand is important. Yeah. I trained it to look for cues that are unique to guns, like the hammer, like the the, um, the slide, and the barrel, and the trigger, and the trigger guard, as well as your fingers near those items. Right. Man, this is fascinating. Real quick, I want to say something about what he just said. Chad said he was training the system to only detect guns that have hands on them and are out and ready. That's an active engineering decision, and this is why that's important. When we told a company that we were working on a gun detection system and we'd like to see if they were interested, they asked us if we could detect guns through clothes. We said no, we had decided not to because we felt like that was an invasion of privacy. They quit talking to us at that point because they were working on millimeter wave radar technology and microwave technology to see through your clothes. Now, there may be an opportunity to use this type of technology in private situations, in a closed environment where certain people are being protected or something along those lines. However, in public, do we really want uh, do we really want to live in a world where we're constantly being hit with x-ray things that look through our clothes? I just want to go on record saying that's not a good idea. I mean, the Fourth Amendment is about search and seizure. It is good for everybody, no matter where you're at on the gun debate. The Fourth Amendment is a good thing and we should preserve it. So. I just want to have this conversation now before we normalize the idea of technology that can see through your clothes being open on the street. There, I've been on record, thanks. 
I wanted to know what would the computer need to see in this frame in order to call this a gun? What are the specific features on the weapon that are different from everything else in the background? And so then you just trained it by playing video, right? Yeah, pu pulling frames out of videos and, and marking within those frames that this is a gun. That this is what's important of the image of the gun. Not just a big box around the whole, you know, if somebody's holding a gun, I didn't draw a big, a big box around their whole arm. I focused in on things that are unique to guns to bring the false alarm right down. Interesting, because one thing that, th like the fingers on the front, mm -hmm. like if you're holding a gun, those fingers are something that you're going to see. Those are those are kind of unique. You, you hold a gun in a certain way, right? Everybody knows how to make a, a finger gun. Yeah. But the other thing is um, you hold your cell phone like that too, and other objects like that as well. So I had to do not only a whole bunch of images of guns, but I had to do a lot of hard negative mining and finding objects that it was thinking were guns initially and then teach it that those are not guns so i did a lot of it i found a lot of youtube videos of people with cell phones youtube's a great resource for, <laughs> <laughs> for teaching your computer what to do so i'm like i'm literally picking up a gun and it's detecting the gun and i'm picking up a cell phone and it's like oh it's a cell phone right this is like real dude <laughs> So how many thousands of images do you think you put in? I think there are about 30,000 images in the library right now. And you went through and ID'd them? Yeah. <laughs> That's what took so long, right? Because I remember like Chad would call me and his brain would be like total mush. I'd be like, what's up, dude? Oh, not nothing much. Just sitting here looking at all these gun images. Highlighting gun images. Oh, man. So uh, seriously, how many hours do you think you have highlighting gun images? I would say like 80 straight hours. Really? Yeah. Man, yeah. but the work, I wouldn't say the work is done, but the foundation is done. Right. Like this is a jumping off point, right? Right. I think a big key of it was that there are other gun databases out there from the movies and other, you know, things that people have put together. But I had to go to a gun store owner and have him give me permission and the people in, in the store permission to take pictures of them holding guns. I wanted lots of different hands and you know, everybody's hands are a little bit different. Lots of different guns, different types of guns. And a gun store was a really good way to do that. So you're telling me that you're basically making a device to protect people against guns and you got gun stores to participate in that data collection process. Yeah. Did you tell them what you were doing? Yeah. And so they were all on board. Yeah. But this is also a function of the resolution of the web camera, right? Yeah, obviously it's a lot easier to detect a gun that's really close to the web webcam. And the confidence goes straight up through the roof when you do that. Like yeah. it's saying, 100%. 100% it is a gun. But if you back up, and, and this is a function of computing power, I would assume? No, it's it's a function of training. How well you train the system. We're out of plane, by the way. He's not muzzle sweeping me. So <laughs> it's, it's a function of training... <laughs> that is a thing. It's a thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, so uh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So the goal ultimately would be able to get a, a processor that's like fast enough and more powerful so that you could you could be all the way across the room here and you would still still detect. See, there's no way it's going to get it there because it's against this background, right? Well, it, it's more, there's not enough pixels on the target from that far away. So it's a spatial density, right? Mm -hmm. This number of pixels on the target. Yeah. Super interesting, but it has to be able to get it in all different aspect angles. Exactly. Right? The ability to track through multiple vantage points, if you will. I wonder if it'll do that. It won't get that. No, it doesn't see that. It, think that, it thinks that's a phone, doesn't it? Yeah. And that was the big challenge, to try to discriminate actual guns from other things that you might be holding. So once you've detected the gun, what do you do with that? I was in class today, and the school that I go to has emergency plans hanging in every room. So I went and got one today, and I opened it up to the active shooter situation to see what it is you're supposed to do. And the answer is, you barricade yourself in a safe place, and then you contact the authorities. You call 911 and try to get first responders there, and you give all this 
detailed information to the first responders. Think about an active shooter from the perspective of the 911 operator call center. One thing that happens in emergency situations like this is people get confused because there's too much information. Some of it's old, some of it's not true, some of it's speculation. That's difficult for the first responders. However, if you were able to real time see every room where there's a gun brandished, whether it's a, a good guy or a bad guy, the people on the ground would have real time information that's actionable. They could do something because they have the God's eye view of the situation and there's not a bunch of conflicting reports pouring in confusing people. So where are we at? Engineers have created gun detectors, not just us. There are a lot of them on the market. What happens with this technology? The purpose of this video was to start that discussion. This technology exists. It's here today, but as we move forward into a world where this kind of stuff works, what do we do with it? We need to think about these issues. So I've got a contact form linked down in the video description. Reach out to us. If, if you have a countermeasure that you're developing for Active Shooter, if, if you have a need for library information, if you're trying to implement this into your security camera system, just reach out. Also, in an upcoming video here on Smarter Every Day, I plan on discussing these issues, not just the, the detection component, but the whole strategy with some people that are working on technologies to implement the detection of guns in a room to how does that information get to a first responder. I learned things and I wanna get that information out there because I want people to know what's possible for your school, your church, your business in your area. All this being said, the, the whole goal here is to contribute to this overall discussion of how can we help save lives through uses of technology. That's it, that's what I wanna do. So I hope you found this valuable and helpful. Please keep your comments and discussion intelligent and respectful. I would greatly appreciate that. And with that, I wanna say thanks to the sponsor. This episode of Smarter Every Day is sponsored by HelloFresh, which is a meal kit delivery system. And what are you making tonight? Pork chops, broccoli, and couscous. Couscous or is it quos quos? I think it's couscous. So how does this work? So they send you this recipe card where it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to make an awesome meal. HelloFresh is the simplest way to cook food at home. They send you pre-measured ingredients so that no matter how comfortable you are in the kitchen, you can make delicious, awesome meals. Have you ever cooked pork chops? No. Are you intimidated by it? <laughs> There's something for everyone. There's family recipes, calorie smart options, or even vegetarian meals. HelloFresh is a really cool way to get your family around the table and eat a good meal. It's flexible too. Like if you're going out of town, you can totally pause it. If you want to change the day of the week that it's delivered, they will work around your schedule. HelloFresh is now from $5.66 per serving, and you can get started with eight free meals. That's 80 bucks off your first month of HelloFresh by going to HelloFresh.com and entering Smarter80. You totally know what you're doing. I know you use this. Go for it. That, that goes in there, I think. Well, just read the instructions. Don't let me derail you here. Super big thanks to HelloFresh for supporting this video. You took your roll. <laughs> did you take mommy's roll? Why did you do that? I offered it. Yeah, I'll it to me. Oh, okay. Cool. Thanks for putting the flowers on the table. Those are nice. You're welcome.